So let's talk about getting below 15% body fat. And what I'm gonna share with you here are three shifts that will help you not only get that lean, but also finally get that physique that you can be proud of and making this a lifestyle. And a lot of this is gonna be based on my experience having been lean between 10 and 12% body fat for more than six years now, also having coached hundreds of individuals to get to that same point, as well as looked at scientific literature to see really what we need to know about getting that lean and making that transition into a healthy lifestyle. And also none of this is some kind of quick fix that works overnight or some kind of solution that's gonna a kind of avoid hard work like there's no such thing you need to put in hard work to get below 15 percent body fat especially when i get down to 10 percent body fat that is not easy and it is difficult it requires a lot of patience and work that you need to be willing to put in and by the way if you're new here my name is mario thomas if you'd like to know more about nutrition health exercise how to make this a healthy lifestyle consider subscribing below so make sure to hit that bell icon to enable notifications for the future videos and now let's dive into it now the first shift that's going to help you get below 15 percent body fat that you need to implement is managing your nutrition decision fatigue and this is really critical because as you're getting below 15 percent body fat you need to know your numbers you need to know your calories your macros what food choices you're gonna get. You really have to structure things in the right way and keep track of that over time to make sure that you can iterate and make changes based on the data that you're gathering. But really critical here at this stage is to have really solid game plans where you don't have to decide every single day what you're gonna eat. You have your default choices. Let's say for each macronutrient, you pick out a couple of choices that are your top choices so you can always rely on those choices. The worst thing to do when you're trying to get below 15% body fat is to wake up every day and then decide what you're gonna eat. Go check the fridge, see what you can piece together somehow. That is not gonna really lead to success because it's gonna drain you. If not in nutrition, it's gonna drain you somewhere else. And that decision fatigue that you generate by constantly making decisions like this every single day for every meal that you eat will eventually get to you. So one shift that is really helpful when you're getting below 15% body fat is being very deliberate with planning, having your meal templates as I like to call them. So having your meals that you know, really tick all the boxes when it comes to what you need to hit in terms of your numbers, personally, that work for your metabolism that will get you to actually lose that body fat. That's really critical. Having those templates, having those predefined choices so you don't have to decide every single day. And this is a structural thing that helps so much when you're talking about getting that precision and getting those metrics and that data because also it makes it easier for you to make adjustments over time. So structure and actually eliminating that decision fatigue is really critical and that's the first shift that I want you to make because it's definitely going to help you get below 15% body fat. Now a second shift that's gonna help you get below 15% body fat and actually make the whole process a lot more manageable and easier is thinking about how to make your overall lifestyle more active. And by this, I don't mean adding more deliberate cardio or more resistance training sessions. I really mean by how can you make the lifestyle factors more active, stuff like walking every day. Are you taking a daily walk? Are you spending most of your time sitting down? Can you do some of the phone calls that you're doing standing, walking around? How can you actually squeeze in more activity? Are you taking the stairs? Are you taking the escalator? What are you actually doing that will be able to increase your energy expenditure? And this is really critical because it all adds up. Every single little thing like that does add up and makes a diet a lot easier because you don't have to cut as much on the food side of things. Now, because you're eating more, your training can also be better. And especially if you're getting down to 10% body fat, good high quality workouts are really what's gonna enable you to, first off, keep all the muscle, but even build muscle mass as you're doing that. So having a more overall active lifestyle, especially if it's now the season where the weather is great and you're in a place where you can actually do that, you really wanna take advantage of that. And if you're, let's say, dieting or cutting during the winter time, there you can look into a standing desk, you can look into a treadmill desk and really finding ways to actually keep yourself active because it is really critical to do that to make the whole process easier and much more manageable. And this lifestyle that you will create by doing these habits will actually help you ultimately also maintain the results when you eventually get to your goal. And it's gonna really make this whole lifestyle and whole journey a lot more enjoyable and stress-free and you're gonna be really happy with the end result. Now the third shift you wanna make when we're talking about getting below 15% body fat is having a very, very clear roadmap of exactly what you need to do, where you need to go in terms of the body weight, in terms of how much you need to lose per week and really planning that out properly so you know what to expect 
what to look out for. So for example, if you got 30 pounds to lose, have deadlines in place, know when you're supposed to be at that weight if you follow certain metrics, really have things in place that is a roadmap. Like if you're a developer right now, if you wanna develop an app, you will have a roadmap, you will know when to release what feature, you will know how to iterate, when do you need to ship that out. If you're someone who is, let's say, creating something, you're an engineer, you're engineering something, well, there's a roadmap for that product. Like you're not just gonna wing it and try to actually get there without having any kind of path. So you wanna really sit down at the beginning of a fat loss phase, you haven't done this if you're now in the midst of a fat loss phase, really plan this out, okay, at what point am I supposed to be that lean? When is this gonna happen? How is that gonna change over time? And have some ideas really where this is headed because if you're just kind of guessing without kind of any roadmap and not anticipating, let's say, a holiday where you might wanna go into a maintenance phase or something that's gonna happen where you wanna actually shift out of a caloric deficit and really planning that stuff out ahead of time and having, again, a plan that you can execute to take away that decision fatigue, to take away that lack of predictability because if you have that little bit of predictability, if you know where you're headed, it's gonna be much easier for you to put in maximum effort and you will know approximately what to look out for and what mistakes and obstacles are basically headed your way so you can actually deal with them and prepare for them. And a roadmap is really, really critical and something that I do for any goal in my life. I have actually the end goal and I start breaking it down. If I wanna do this in six months, okay, where do I need to be in three months? Okay, where do I need to be in a month from now? Where do I need to be in a week from now? Where do I need to be by the end of the day? What do I need to do right now to actually get closer to that six month goal? And really break that down because that's gonna help you a lot in the process of you attaining the goal and you're not gonna just end up in the dream world thinking about one day it's gonna happen, this is gonna happen or you're also not gonna get too caught up in the process so much that you lose motivation. You can use the end goal to motivate yourself and remind yourself why you're doing this, but then you get down to the process of exactly what needs to happen today in order to make that dream and that goal an actual reality. And that's really how you approach things. That's how you reach high level goals and going below 15% body fat is definitely a high level goal. It's not something that's gonna be easy. It's gonna be very difficult. So you really wanna have all these things, you wanna tick all these boxes to make sure that you're doing things right, that you're following an actual plan that will get you there. Instead of just winging it, and if you're winging it, I mean, that's like hoping, and hope is really not a strategy that is reliable. So you wanna definitely follow step-by-step step so you can iterate, use data, make changes over time, and have good systems in place. And I'm actually gonna leave a video here at the end that's gonna help you get to 10% body fat, which I want you to check out. There's lots of good stuff in that video. Also, if you wanna work with me as your mentor and as your coach, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can find more details about that, and I will see you in that next video.